So today I'm going to talk about baking normal maps for VRChat. You can use this technique in basically any 3D modeling project. Um, however, it is most commonly used in games. Basically, a normal map is a texture that affects the uh, angle light reflects off of your object. So I will put a picture of a normal map on screen right now, but basically different colors on the normal map represent different directions that light should reflect. Normal maps are great because they can make lower poly objects if you're rounder or highly detailed uh, without affecting performance that much at all. So today I'm going to walk you through the basics of creating a normal map through the process called baking uh, using this jacket as an example. And I'll be doing this in two different applications, Blender and then Substance Painter. So when you're creating your normal map, you basically need your low poly object that you're making the normal map for, as well as the high poly object that you're taking the normal data from. So here's a jacket from a current project that I'm working on, and I subdivided it a bunch of times and then used the sculpt tool to add the appearance of wrinkles in the cloth. However, this is 140 odd thousand triangles, uh, so this is gonna cause some performance issues. So the reason I decided to go with this subdivide and sculpt method is basically that these two objects have near identical UVs. UVs basically control how and where you apply the texture to an object, so having identical UVs between your two objects is very important. As long as you start with an object that is UV unwrapped and work from there, the two objects should have similar or identical UVs which will make things easier for you later. Unfortunately, this method will not work if your objects have different UVs, but as long as you follow the subdivide and sculpt method, just like I mentioned, you should be all right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is make sure that both of our objects have their scale and rotation applied. Basically, even though both of the objects look the same size to us, Blender might not be treating them as the same size. So I'm going to select the object, hit Control A, and apply rotation and scale. And I'm going to do that same thing to my second object. Now I'm going to do my best to make sure that the objects are at the same location. So they should be overlapping just like this. So now that we have our scene prepared for baking, we're going to go over to our shading tab. So right here at the top, click on shading, and it will take us to our shader nodes editor. So we're almost ready to start baking. I'm just going to pull up one more little image tab to make our job easier. If you right click on this area between the two windows, you'll be able to do a horizontal or vertical split. So I want a vertical split, and I'm just going to put that down here. See, so now we have another view window to work with, and I'm going to change this to image editor. And the reason we need this image editor is this is where our final baked normal map is going to end up. So it helps to see it throughout the process. So in our image editing window, I'm going to create a new image that's going to become our normal map. I'm going to call it normal map and you can set it to whatever dimensions you prefer. Just keep in mind that larger dimensions are going to be a larger file size and larger performance cost. I'm going to set mine as a 2K square image texture. OK, now we need to tell Blender what to bake and where to bake it to. Select your low poly mesh and delete the material if it has one. Now create a new material in the shader node editor. Hit shift A to add a new node and search for image texture. Now we want to open our normal image texture that we created. This is the most important step. Set the color space to non-color. The baking process will not work if this is set to sRGB or any color space other than non-color. Make sure that across both your original model as well as your high poly model that the only thing selected is the image texture. As you can see, I have this shader selected, so I'll want to click off of it to deselect it. Now I'll make sure that my image texture is selected inside of the original jacket. Lastly, in my hierarchy, I'm going to do these steps in this exact order. Click on my high poly mesh, then hold down control and click on my original mesh. As you can see, my high poly mesh is a darker orange than my low poly mesh. Next, we're going to go to the Renders Properties tab, which is represented by this camera, and change our render engine to Cycles. If your device has a GPU, you can choose to bake on your CPU or GPU. They will have slightly different results. It's all up to preference, honestly. I'm going to bake using my GPU just because it's going to be a little bit faster. So now what I'm going to do is scroll on down to Bake and change the bake type from Combines to Normal. I'm also going to check Selected to Active. Basically what this means is we're taking the information from our selected object to our active object as represented by the colors that I mentioned earlier. So if you expand the selected active dropdown, you'll notice there are some parameters to mess with. The last step is going to require a little bit of experimentation. I'm going to hit bake and based on the results of our bake, I'm going to adjust some of the parameters here until I find a result that I like. So let's hit bake. 
So as you can see, here's the result of our normal map bake. So this is where the experimentation comes in. If for whatever reason your normal map doesn't fully show up or it's not detailed enough, you may need to play with the extrusion and max ray distance values. Having extrusion and ray distance values that are too low may result in loss of details. However, having these values too high may copy unwanted details from random parts of the mesh to another. Ultimately, just play with these values until you find something that works with your project. Some factors that might affect what these values are for you would include the scale of your object, how detailed and how high the poly count is, etc. But assuming you've found values that work for you in a normal map that looks good, let's preview it inside of Blender just to final check on everything. I'm going to hide our high poly mesh just because I no longer need it. And I'm going to select our low poly mesh. Next, inside of the shader editor, I'm going to hit Shift A to add a node and type in normal map. Finally, I'm going to plug our image texture into the normal map node and plug our normal map node into the normal slot of the object. And as you can see, here is our object with the newly baked normal map, even though the poly count is still the same. You will notice there are some errors on our normal map. This is just kind of a result of the baking process. Sometimes UVs or mesh doesn't quite line up. Blender gets confused. But good news is, is we can just quickly fix this inside of the texture paint tool. And I'm basically just going to smudge out any of the errors until you can't see them anymore. So just like so. You don't have to do this inside of Blender's uh, texture editor. You could do it in Photoshop. I just find it's easier to work directly on the model. And I will say the less complicated the UVs of your object are, the less likely you are to run into these issues. Something like a prop or baking abs, freckles, or something else onto a character are much different than baking entire sets of wrinkles and cloth. Alright, now that I have a normal map that I am happy with, all I have to do is save my image texture. So I can either do that from the texture paint tab right here, image and then save as, or I can do it from the window that we created in the shading tab earlier right here under image and then save as. So next I'm going to walk you through baking in Substance Painter. So in order to bake in Substance Painter, you need 3D models of both your low poly and high poly mesh. I know there is a variety of 3D models that Substance Painter accepts, but two that I know for sure work are object files, .obj and fbxs. So I'm going to select my high poly mesh, file export, export as fbx, then I'm going to limit my export to selected objects, export it, and then repeat the steps for my low poly jacket. So here's Substance Painter, but before I show you how to bake your normals, I just want to let you know that if you have a student email, so high school or university, you are eligible to have Substance Painter for free. It's a phenomenal tool. It does have a learning curve, but I would highly recommend it. And again, if you have a student email, then you can get it for free. So I will leave links to check that out in the description. But yes, once you are in Substance Painter, what you're going to want to do is hit File, New, and Create a New Project. Make sure that for the template, you have PBR Metallic Roughness selected. Then we have to upload the file that we want to use within Substance Painter. Here we're going to upload our low poly mesh. Once again, you can change the document resolution to anything you like, but I'm going to just use 2K. And lastly, we're going to want to change our normal map format to OpenGL. Basically, there are different types of normal maps where the different colors on the map represent different directions. And depending on what normal map format you use, the directions will be flipped around. And I believe VRChat as well as Unity as a whole does use OpenGL unless you specify otherwise. So now with all of our settings, we're going to click OK. And here you can see our mesh in the preview window. So baking normal maps in Substance Painter is super easy. All we have to do is click on Texture Set Settings over here on the right. Scroll down and then click on Bake Mesh Maps. So that is going to make a new window for us. Uh, first, we're going to change our output size to 2K, which is the same thing that I selected at the start. And next, I'm going to click on this little file icon to the far right of where it says High Definition Meshes. And here I'm going to upload our high poly mesh. 
the next thing that we have to do is choose what we want our output textures to be. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to uncheck everything except for normals. However, if you want to, you can also bake height or ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion just lets you apply some passive shadows to your object. But for this tutorial, all I really care about is normal map. All right, and the last thing that there is to do is hit bake and experiment with different parameters. So first I'm going to hit bake selected textures. And as you can see, here is what our final normal map looks like on our object. Finally, if you're getting issues with your map in Substance Painter, there's a couple of things you can try. Number one, make sure ignore backface is checked. Basically, this will just prevent the backsides of your mesh, which you won't see anyway, from interfering with baking your normal map. You can also adjust the max frontal and max rear distance for ray tracing. Having these distances too small may result in loss of detail, but having them too high might result in unwanted detail collecting from different parts of your meshes. So ultimately, you're going to have to play around a little bit just to see what works best for your project. Thank you so much for your time and patience today. Hopefully this was helpful for you and your projects and for reducing that poly count to make things more optimized for yourself and others. Once again, thank you so much for your patience with the mic quality. I know it's not the best, but I'm grateful for your support nonetheless. I don't currently have the ability to buy a new microphone, but I assure you it is on the top of my upgrades list when I get the chance. Even though watching and possibly liking this video is enough support as it is, if you want to go the extra mile, you can check out some of my links in the description where you can donate or get something from my store to treat yourself to something nice while supporting me in the process. I have all sorts of particles, props, and furniture for your VRChat avatars and worlds, many of which are free, and I plan on uploading this jacket in the near future. Thank you so much for all of your support so far, and good luck baking your normal maps.
Thank you.